He sailed through his two-year check. Um, they said everything was fine. He had a bit of a dreamy look in his eye. Was all the things they said, and I wasn't happy. I just, I just felt there was something not quite right. This is Steve and Tom, father and son. It's been a challenge for the family to get the support they need so that Tom can go to a mainstream school. Tom was diagnosed with Asperger's and has had a lot of medical interventions. It took me a series of about seven meetings before I finally got people to start taking me seriously. Uh, they would always say, oh, what do you think's going on with your son? And I'd say, he's mildly autistic. And they'd say, oh, what makes you think that? And I'd recite the things, you know, he doesn't make eye contact, you know, he walks on his tiptoes. It was difficult for me to get them to take me seriously. We went through the whole routine again, and at the end of it, they said, your son's autistic, he's high-functioning autistic. We wanted to say, well, I've been telling you that for a year. Why the hell didn't you listen to me, you know? Tom may have Asperger's, but this doesn't stop him being a pretty cool kid. It's a stampede! I'm uh, one, f one, one meter, 49 centimeters tall. <laughs> I like cartoons, sci-fi, video games, TV, meat. What? Yeah, baby, yeah! Dad says my reading age is 12. It's two years older than I actually am. Help, I'm being mobbed by crazy TV fans! <laughs> Well, I'm thinking of going into the movie business, but that's my secondary plan. But my, uh, my first plan is to win the X Factor. The two key agencies involved in Tom's life are health and education. Both agencies supply essential support for Tom, but problems have arisen when communication has broken down. The most frustrating thing is having to tell your story so many times. We'd tell the story to health, and then when he got into nursery, we'd have to tell the story to education. And then we got to a situation where he was being assessed by an educational psychologist, then he was being assessed by a clinical a child psychologist. On top of all that, people would leave their jobs, and new people would come in, and we'd have to start from scratch again. So there was very little continuity for a period of time. The only continuity was really me being able to tell the story. Steve's determination paid off as Tom got a place at St Mark's School in Islington, where they recognise the importance of supporting the whole family and have excellent pastoral care for children with additional needs. Tom is uh, a boy we have in Year 5. He's been here since reception. He's a special child, just like all the rest of them. I think he copes with his situation very well in mainstream school. I think that's partly to do with the fact that we are an inclusive school. The school received help in delivering support for Tom from Islington's child development team. For five years, Tom's key worker was Leslie Platts, who is an advocate for the new integrated working programme. I acted uh, as a lead professional for um, Tom when he was uh, younger, when he was in our service, when he was under five. Um, and my particular connection with them was that I was their single point of contact. I coordinated his assessment and um, uh, was involved in the whole of the team when we, we gave uh, Tom and his family the diagnosis around um, Tom's Asperger's. Uh, and was also then the link after that to ensure that they had all the right information, that they were getting the right uh, treatment and services that they, that they needed. Islington Council are developing an integrated approach to children's services to ensure that schools like St Mark's can make their good inclusive practice even more effective. What the Integrated Working Programme does is to try and ensure that families are, have a single point of contact, that they don't have to go through lots of different services in order to get the service that they actually need. It's about different agencies talking to each other, it's about making sure that every person that's working with the family knows the whole picture about what's going on. The Integrated Working Ideal is not just about professionals, it takes the parents into account as well. What was really, really significant was the school just embraced the whole idea of me being involved and Tom being there. I had schools say to me, oh, Tom will never make friends and oh, Tom has to travel far to school. And St. Mark's was the only school that said Tom will be welcome here. Parents find the systems very confusing. You know, trying to work out who everybody was, where everybody was based, what everybody's role was. 
and that that becomes quite distressing for a family, particularly if they're having to go over all the, you know, hardships they've already been through um, up into that phase. Uh, and I think there are feelings that, as a parent, that maybe you're missing something, you're not doing something right as a parent, and that can be really upsetting. Schools often take the lead in supporting children with additional needs, and though other agencies have a job to do, collaboration between agencies can be an issue. Well, when I was working as a, um, an occupational therapist uh, in the community, um, I was very, I was working a lot as a, as a unidisciplinary person. I was looking at a very narrow piece of a uh, piece of the child, a tiny piece of the jigsaw about the whole child, um, and then trying to then trying to get trying to liaise with services like education with schools with nurseries with children's centers was always very difficult because a they don't really understand your role and b um, they they were didn't weren't particularly keen on sharing that information and so they would keep their own bit of information we would keep our piece of information and you know nobody was really ever really sharing information the school supports the family with an informal team for tom all the school staff know they aren't there just to teach Tom, but to support him as a whole person. There was really a whole team that were interested in Tom, that cared about his transition, cared about him being in, sec in primary school, sorry, and cared about how he was, how he was going to do there. Class teachers, senior management, and even the school cook take an active approach to making sure Tom is fully involved in school life. Routines for Tom are key, especially when he was in Key Stage 1. It was very important if his teacher wasn't going to be at school that he was informed, changes to timetable, that kind of thing, that he was notified. But as things have gone on, he, he is actually able to cope with them a lot better now because he feels really secure and safe in the school and because of the support that he knows is available for him. Class teachers are on the front line. They have the responsibility for the welfare of all the children in their class, as well as looking after children with specific needs. Mr Miles just qualified and he's an absolutely fantastic teacher and he's really taken on board Tom's needs and met them accordingly in the classroom. Give me one of your best ones please Tom. 71 divided by 35 equals 2 remainder 1. That's fantastic Tom. He's, uh, he's the highest flyer in my class in maths. He puts things together in his mind in a special way and he's got his own way of doing it. But it doesn't mean I can't push him a bit further, really. OK, so how many have you got, Tom? Four. Four. You've got four. Tom, can I challenge you? Yes. Can you do some numbers that are bigger than 50? Yes, yeah, some different vision ones. And can you get three of them for me, please? What I know about Asperger's is that, you know, it, you know it's, um, there's, a, there's a huge, big range you know, children on the autistic spectrum, you know, there's a huge range of um, challenges they face. So, um, for me, the important thing is getting to know Tom and also sort of talking to other members of staff, sort of knowing the challenges that he's faced before and how we can sort of overcome them sort of together, you know. So you're using an octagon to make yes. triangles and you're going to count up the triangles, yeah? Yes. How many have you got at the moment? Two, three, four. Five. I'm going to put you out of your misery, Tom. There's a triangle. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah! <laughs> Pastoral support service has a part of the picture around how the child is functioning in school. Uh, whereas when you work with lots of other different agencies, there's a lot of different pieces of information. Like, what does that kid do after school? What does that child do when they're um, at home at the weekends? Or does that child receive any other services? Is there anything else going on? To have the whole picture and to look at who else is involved and have the whole team involved will always um, you know, lead to a better outcome, I think, for the child. Bingo! Just a minute, quick question. Can I show them the, my, can I show them the thing I've got in my pocket? Hey, Kieran! You know, they're, they're, they're listening to everything I say, because check this out little microphone pad, and they've stuck a microphone to my chest. So that's what that is, isn't it? Yep. Hello! <laughs> In Tom's case, amongst all the changes, certain members of school staff have stuck with him, and this consistent approach really helps him. The people who've been constant have been able to fill the gaps for the people who haven't been constant, like the speech-language therapist might change 
not on a regular basis, but on a, maybe on a yearly basis. But the one person who's there consistently to implement the programme is Sarah Hughes. Um, I mean, when Tom first came to the school, I had more daily involvement with him because um, he'd had his statement before he came to the school and uh, we had to set up support for him so that he could settle in. I mean, we're a small school, so the children very quickly, even, even if there are changes of staff, the children pick up on that and get used to new people quite quickly. Um, but especially for Tom, um, where he, has, he sometimes finds change quite difficult and he likes routines and, I mean, to, see, to have a familiar face myself and the other members of staff that have been here for quite a while and I think it probably has has helped him over the years yes Tom is doing really well mainly due to the educational support he receives from teachers and TAs but his success could also be put down to some of the more general support he gets from ancillary school staff including the school's cook I'm just in the line to get my lunch. And who's going to serve you your lunch, eh? Annie is uh, over there. Tom is sensory defensive, which means he won't eat certain foods. Annie isn't obliged to make special food for Tom, but she does because she believes that Tom's welfare is important. Tom, uh, he can't have anything like bolognese or any pies or anything like that, so... If it's bolognese, I'll take some mince out and make him a burger. I've been here five years. Ever since I came here, I've been doing this for him. It's not hard, I just make sure that he has it, because I'd rather him eat something than not eat anything, you know? They just want to film me having a little chat with you about how you've helped me. And... OK, so, what do you think? Well, I think you're really you nice because of all the stuff you've done for me over the years. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Most of the time I'm not really hungry, so I don't eat it, but when I am hungry, it's absolutely fabulous. <laughs> Islington Council's ambition is that over the next year, a successful rollout of an integrated working approach will help to create multidisciplinary teams of professionals with the best tools to help children like Tom. Well, my long-term hope is that services don't just work on their own, don't work in an insulated way, that they always, when they start an assessment or start seeing a child or family, that they always think, who else is involved? Who else do I need to get involved? I think integrated working is, is breaking down those barriers and trying to pull it all together so that we're looking at a single way of assessing children, a single way of planning and providing intervention for children that all the people that are working with that child and family know about, rather than just having bits and pieces of the jigsaw. We've got the whole, much more of the whole picture now. Tom has one year left at St Mark's School before he transfers to secondary. Tom's improvement will depend on him continuing to receive the best possible support. People tell me they are inspired working with him and the amount of effort and work he puts into making everybody else's lives easy is, is a wonder to behold. It really is. Um, he's a very special person. Thank <laughs> you.